Chair recognizes Mr. Donalds from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, Mayor Bowser, good to see you. Okay. Chief Conti, it's been a while. You haven't been back for oh, two years or so. Mm -hmm. It's good, to, good to see you. Mr. Donahue, first time. <laughs> uh, Mr. Graves, bro, you need to do your job. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just be very clear. You know, obviously, you have a responsibility to the residents of the district in a, in a myriad of ways. I think, you know, my colleague talked about that and went in some heavy detail there. But if you're not going to do the job of actually standing behind Chief Conti and the work that his men and women do with the Metropolitan Police Department, then you're selling them down a the river and with them, the residents of D.C., um, and even the tourists that come to D.C. But, you know, they're the ones that live here. They, you know, they ride the bus. They, 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 they get on the metro. They're going to school. They're going to work. And what everybody wants is just to be safe. And you're not holding up your end of the bargain. I've seen MPD all over D.C. They're out here every single day. It's not they are here. It's very clear when they're on the scene. But you're not doing your job. Um, so I, I just find it to be disgusting, frankly. Just uphold the law, enforce the law, and that actually will make the job easier for the chief and for the mayor to do their jobs. Um, <clears throat> mayor Bowser, real quick, you know, you when we were looking, when the Oversight Committee was investigating January 6th, uh, you were not here. I don't know what was going on, so I, no need to go down that road. But um, <clears throat> I really had a question about you requested troops on December, you, you addressed National Guard troops on December 31, uh, 2020, is that correct? That sounds right, but I, I would wanna confirm the date. That's fine, that it's, it's, right. it's, yep. it's, that's fine, that's fine. Um, it, based upon any recollection that you have, was, what was the rationale for requesting National Guard troops? Um, we wanted to make sure that our city blocks um, were um, protected. Uh, and the chief decided uh, in the we were in that transition week, um, so the chiefs uh, decided that we wanted to create a traffic box around um, certain parts of our downtown, and the best use of resources would be National Guard uh, instead mm -hmm. of MPD, so that MPD could be available for law enforcement. So okay. that was our request. Okay, so quick follow up to that because you know I remember it <clears throat> having gone through orientation here before I got sworn in um, as a member of Congress, that during that time period, you know, to the pandemic and, and everything else, um, there was no traffic in DC, not like it is today. Like nobody was driving through the streets of DC during that time period. So like, and this is a legitimate question, was the concerns purely traffic corridors in the district for the date of January 6th? Let me ask the chief to talk about how we- Sure, Chief Conte, if you can, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, so traffic is, is part of the concern. Uh, you know, certainly when we create traffic boxes and you know we're expecting a lot of people in our city, we right. don't want to mix people and cars. So creating that space where uh, for people who are expressing their First Amendment rights could peacefully be in the street or on the sidewalk or whatever okay. and not have or not be hindered by cars and buses okay. moving about. Well, Chief, I just want to reclaim my time. I'm a minute yes, 28. That's no disrespect to what you're saying. <clears throat> and my coughing, no disrespect to either. No worries. <laughs> um, so real quick, now in a letter that was sent on January 5th, uh, Mayor Bowser, you stated that the National Guard, that you were accepting the support, but you wanted them to be in an unarmed capacity. Is that correct? Or Chief Conti, can you corroborate that? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, all right. So, and, and I thank you for that. It's some, these are some of the things that we just want to clarify it. And I think here's, here's the overarching point. And, and to be frank, honestly, Mayor Bowser, this really ain't got nothing to do with you. I think this is a general point of what happened when and why. And I think, um, actually last question for you. When your, your request for National Guard troops were, obviously they were answered and you were given whatever you needed. Is that correct? We were given, I believe, some of what we requested. Okay, were there any limits that came from the Secretary of the Army? Yes. Okay, can anybody stipulate what, the, what, the, what that was? Yeah, a couple of things. So we also, we wanted, well, first of all, the limitation was uh, we could not move, we could not change their assignments without first receiving um, approval from the Secretary of the Army. Uh, we could not move okay. uh, National Guard uh, members uh, anywhere 
east of 9th Street Northwest. We couldn't move them there. And another thing we wanted was a quick reaction uh, force members of the National Guard to be able to respond. I don't think we received that resource either. Okay. We, yes, sir. All right. Last point I'll make, Mr. Chairman, and I, and I know I'm slightly over my time. Um, one thing that was clear in previous testimony in this committee, corroborated by this testimony today, is that you know troops from National Guard were authorized by the president at the time, Donald Trump, on January 4. They were authorized. It was testified in this committee they were authorized. <clears throat> D.C. was able to take advantage of them in the capacity that, that D.C. wanted to save for the couple of requests that you also wanted. One thing that's important to indicate, Mr. Chairman, is that for, these, for National Guard troops to be deployed to the Capitol, it requires the Capitol Police Board to actually issue a state of emergency for troops to come on Capitol grounds. And the police board is made up of the architect of the Capitol, the head of Senate security, the head of House security, and the chief of the Capitol police. And by my understanding, three of those four people report to the Speaker of the House. And the Speaker of the House at that time was Nancy Pelosi. So when we want to talk about National Guard being here and the timetable of them getting here, it's important to understand that there were National Guard in the District of Columbia, and their limitation of coming to the Capitol was not due to anybody else because the President is not authorized to deploy troops to the Capitol, separation of powers. It is at the hands of the Speaker of the House. And with that, I yield, and I apologize for being a minute and 24 over. Chairman, uh, gentleman yields back. Chair